Welcome to Whiteboard Programming, where we simplify programming with easy to understand whiteboard videos. And today I'll be sharing with you the basic understanding of the architecture of a Web 3.2 application and what tech stack you must follow in order to make your debut to become a Web 3 professional. So let's get started. First off, let's have a recap. Web 1 or Web 1.0 is the Internet of Information. That is the HTML CSS website you cannot interact with. Web 2 or Web 2.0 is the Internet of Interactions. That is modern platforms like Facebook, Twitter, etc. that allow you to be connected end to end with others. And further, Web 3 or Web 3.0 which is the new Internet of Value. That is the Internet where centralization of information is eliminated. But if you want to learn a bit more about what is Web 3.0 exactly, I'll recommend you to watch the following videos. Link for the same is given in the description below. Further, to your surprise, you must have heard that the foundation of Web3 is centered around blockchain. But when you start Web3 development, you will realize that blockchain is just a part of it. And to draw comparison, a blockchain in Web3 app might be similar to how a database might be for a typical web app that you might be developing for Web 2.0. Moving on, in Web 3.0, as you already might know, dApps play an important role. Why? Because the most significant benefit of creating a dApp is ownership and composability. By ownership, we mean ownership of data, content, and literally everything that belongs to you and is under your name here. And by composability, we mean that with Web 3, you will be able to make every application composable by sharing and consuming their data between different applications. Confused? Let me explain with an example. Currently, every single software company out there right now is focused on collecting user data, which is their single biggest asset and differentiates them from one another. Yes, exactly. Not the product, but the data they hold. Companies that are right now competing with each other with similar UI UX and slightly different business logic are valuable independently because of the data they have aggregated. But this won't be the case anymore, as this is what exactly Web3 will disrupt. You will be able to share and consume data while using different applications. For example, think about a metaverse where you can buy things from Meta and use them in the Microsoft ecosystem. That's cool, right? But do note that this is just the start. We'll see more innovation in the near future. And in order for you to understand what is Web3 architecture of an application, it's first crucial to know how applications in Web2 worked. So in a traditional Web2.0 application, a user used to interact with the front end of an application, which was closely tied to the back end of an application through a load balancer wherein API layer and authentication used to perform their respective functions. This backend of the application shares data with the user on the front end after conducting a series of interactions with its database and file storage. These all components work hand in hand to deliver a seamless experience to an end user. And although I have not depicted things like caches, queues, etc., but a general over the top architecture looks like this only. This is quite simple, right? Now, for a Web3 app, the front end will remain the same. But some exciting changes start to happen on the back end side of things. Let's see how the architecture of a Web3.0 application works. Now, on comparison between Web2 and Web3, you'll discover that the blockchain node is doing the heavy lifting here and managing the data, which is decentralized into a network of blockchains. Since we all know that it is expensive to store data directly on the chain, we have some off-chain file storage and a P2P database facilitating data storage. Finally, to build a secure layer, we have a wallet or a private key based authentication to verify the individual's identity. And do note that this is just an over the top depiction of the architecture. In reality, we have much more complex applications and need architectural parameters from both Web 2 and Web 3.0 technologies. Next, 
as we have learned what a Web3 architecture generally looks like. Now let's deep dive into each of its components to better understand the Web3 tech stack needed for us to kickstart our journey. Number one, blockchain. You need to know about how to select blockchains to build upon. Why you ask? As in order to build any project, you need to take into account multiple factors like decentralization, transaction throughput, gas fees, ecosystem, interoperability, and a lot more other things. And just to clear a random thought, every single blockchain will do the job, but a few are better in use case specific cases from others, and each of them have their own strength and weaknesses. And as a beginner, I would recommend you to start off with Ethereum Virtual Machine or EVM and Solidity because of their massive influence in the blockchain developer community. And also, when you have learned this, it will be an easier task for you to understand the concepts of other technology in the ecosystem like Solana, Layer 2s like Polygon, StarX and StarkNet, and application chains like Tendermint, Cosmos and Polkadot, etc. Next, number two, blockchain node. Now, for deploying an application in production, you need a server. A blockchain node does this job for blockchains. Blockchain nodes are network stakeholders or devices running the blockchain software. Hence, they are authorized to keep track of distributed ledger serving as communication hubs for network tasks. Here, a P2P or peer-to-peer -peer protocol allows nodes to communicate within the network and transfer information about transactions and new blocks. You can either self-run a blockchain node using AWS or Azure service or get a node from service providers like Quicknode, Morales, Infura, etc. that offer APIs to create automated flows. Next, number three, P2B database. Now you must be thinking, why do we need a database when we are using a blockchain in the first place? Additionally, will it not hinder our idea of a decentralized application? Now, a simple answer to this is that storing data on a blockchain is slow and expensive. So we need an additional database to access data off chain, ensuring that we are not accessing the chain again and again. And to promote that decentralization part of it, we use peer-to-peer -peer or P2P databases that store and host all of the data in streams to eliminate centralized database servers, blockchains, or local storage. For example, you can think about the case of how your torrents get downloaded. Further, another instance would be a Ceramic network, which is one of the most common decentralized database provider that we can use in today's day and age. Next, number four, decentralized file storage. Now, here, like every other application, we need a dedicated file storage system similar to Amazon S3 for Web2 applications. And do note that databases essentially are tabular data while file storage is that folder-based data you need to store your large media files on. And in Web3, we majorly employ IPFS, which is the most common P2P file system protocol with excellent community support. Rweave is another option focused on keeping data permanently and accordingly, you can use platforms like Filecoin, Skynet, Storage, and ZeroChain to host these file storage systems. Next, number five, authentication in Web3. Now, looking at the traditional login methods in Web2 world, we usually have simple form structure where the user details are stored in a database and cross-checked for verification. Additionally, services like Google and Facebook offer open authentication, enabling access to some of the basic information to the app directly, making the process seamless. Although this approach is convenient, this cannot be now used in a decentralized app since you need a private key to sign a transaction. That's why in Web3, authentication is one of the most essential aspect and here, we do not have users data, but actually we have something we call as wallets, wherein cryptographic signatures are used to prove ownership of those blockchain addresses. It is essential to know how to access and interact with the user's address and private key as a Web3 developer. Further, the fascinating aspect of owning a blockchain wallet is that once a user loses their private key to a wallet address, no one can recover it for them. 
This is useful and scary at the same time. But don't worry. Similar to open authentication in Web 2.0, we have Web 3 authentication in Web 3. It is a seemingly interesting tool which helps in bridging the Web 2 and Web 3 worlds. Its simple authentication infrastructure gives those open authentication capabilities to Web3 applications in a self-custodial way for the users. By self-custodial here, I mean that the users has the custody of the key and not the application or Web3 authentication system. This is done through a unique MPC architecture and hence the private key is never stored in a single server or node or by any other method with complete access. If you'd like to learn more about this, I would recommend checking out its individual architecture. The link for the same is given in the description below. Next, number six, implementing the front end. Now, to your surprise, the front end technologies for Web3 and Web2 are the same. The only difference is where you need to reimagine the UX of the application because of the authentication, processing in the blockchain, and the general flow of the application are slightly different in Web3 based dApps from Web2 based applications. Some good technologies you can start with is React and Next.js since most developers are currently using this in the Web3 world. Further, for the client side backend, things get a bit different. Here is where you need to understand how you can interact with the blockchain you have created and for this, you can use Web3 interaction libraries that can help you with the same. But you'll need to first understand how they work and interact with blockchain properly. Which brings us to the next point. Number seven, blockchain interaction or Web3 libraries and development tools. Now, various Web3 libraries allow you to interact with nodes using HTTP, IPC or WebSocket. These libraries help developers write intuitive one-line method to initialize JSON RPC requests that interact with whichever underlying chain you've chosen. On Ethereum, some of the Web3 libraries are Web3.js, Ether.js, and Lite.js. On top of that, many chains have developer tools that provide features which can allow for much faster iterations than public testnets. Here, tools like Ganesh, Truffle, Hardhat, and Brownie are generally employed. Lastly, as a conclusion, I'd like to say that Web3 is here to stay. But this does not mean that the concepts of Web2 are dead. And only by learning the new tech stack and by understanding its key usage and characteristics can a developer succeed in this new industry. With that, I hope this video was helpful to you and served value. If you love my content, feel free to smash that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do as it keeps me motivated and helps me create more content like this for you.